If you're watching this video right now, that means you're trying to get started in EMS. So here's what I'm gonna do for you. I'm gonna give you everything I got in this video and I'm gonna share with you exactly how to do that. Let's dive into it. Hey everyone, it's the Paramedic Coach back here with another video. Be sure to like and subscribe down below. This channel is related to EMT and paramedic school and maximizing your EMS education. So what we're gonna talk about next here inside this video is, we're gonna talk about getting started in EMS, right? Like I told you in the beginning, I'm gonna give you everything I got to share with you my tips and insight on getting started in this profession. So here it is. First, I want to talk briefly about the levels and the areas in EMS. So first, let's talk levels. So there's many levels inside the ambulance service that I'm going to break down for you, okay? Now here they are. I go based off of the National Registry of Emergency Medical Technicians, the NREMT. Now what they say, there's an EMT level in the ambulance service. You have an advanced EMT level in the ambulance service. And then you have a paramedic level in the ambulance service. Now, below an EMT and above the paramedic, you have other certifications that you can get. Now, the National Registry has a program, has a, has a, has a certification for what they call a medical first responder. But here's, again, I'm giving you my recommendations. If you're trying to work on an ambulance as a profession, I recommend going right into the EMT. That first responder level is usually held by someone who maybe is a, a volunteer at a fire department who's just starting off or, or is someone in law enforcement or another field or another career where they just want to have some awareness about being a first responder. If you're going to go all in, get your EMT cert. Go all in get your EMT cert. And this is what we're talking about. This is getting started in EMS. So if we're gonna get started, let's do it the right way. Let's not waste time, okay? So first step is getting your EMT and passing your NREMT is my first recommendation for you, okay? I would say this, even if your state, even if your state does not have NREMT, what I, or you don't need it to work, I recommend you getting that certification because then it's easier for you to move. We want to be mobile, okay, right? If you want to travel, right, as a provider and travel, well, then you actually have a way to do that through a national registry. And it also is going to look very good for you, okay? So I can't recommend it enough, number one. Now, we're talking about getting started. So the first thing you need to do to get started is you got to prep. You got to do the prep work first. Now, while you could find an EMT class, it doesn't have any prerequisites. There's no, you can just show up with a high school diploma. Don't get fooled that EMT school is entry level because it's not. And here's why, why I say it's not. Many, many people will fail out of EMT school. And the reason why I believe is this. It's because they did not best prepare themselves for an accelerated learning environment, right? The instructors do an amazing job. The problem is you did not prep yourself for EMT school. Everything in EMS is accelerated. Think about it. Everything we do is accelerated, it's on fast mode, okay? So here's the thing. If you prepare for EMS, then you're gonna have the best chance at being successful. So I would highly recommend studying before you go, into, go in to EMT school. Okay, that's the next step. Now, I've been nationally registered as a paramedic since 2013, okay? The fall of 2013 when I first got my National Registry Paramedic, I got my National Registry EMT in 2011, guys, in 2011, okay? So it was the fall of 2011, I had my EMT, in the fall of 2013, I had his National Registry paramedic and got through paramedic school. I was 21 years old when I got this certification, right? So now, I'm shooting this video in 2020, you can see the experience and the timeline there, what I'm saying this. So I can't recommend highly enough 
Um, if you're planning on going all in this career to get your paramedic. We talk about uh, different jobs, opportunities. There's so much more opportunities inside of the paramedic level, okay? There's stuff, for example, you can be a flight paramedic. You can be a critical care transport paramedic. You can now emerging is a, a community paramedic. Um, I've done stuff with research studies be just because I was a paramedic at a major hospital, okay? I was involved in that. Only reason, I was a paramedic. If I wasn't a paramedic, I wouldn't have been able to do that. Um, you can do stuff with uh, clinical trials. So every clinical trial needs an ACLS provider, okay? They're doing stuff like IVs. Well, if somebody passes out, they'll hire a medic to be the ACLS provider at that lab or that clinical trial. So another example, we could use your paramedic skills. What about working inside a doctor's office where you can do IVs? So a lot of these jobs are gonna be sought after on people at the paramedic level, okay? So if you're gonna go all in this career, I highly recommend that you do go all the way and get your paramedic. That would be my recommendation because you're gonna get paid the most and have the most opportunity to relocate. And also, let's talk about cruise ships. You can also be a paramedic on a cruise ship. So again, my uh, paramedic instructor, um, when I walked into his, his classroom and I got my associate degree, he sat me down and he said, Evan, I want to tell you something. It's never going to hurt to have more letters after your name. And so there's a lot of certifications you can get inside of EMS. It's not about certifications. What it's about is education and making sure that you know real practical stuff, not BS stuff, real practical stuff that's going to help your patients. And if you pick up something, in an extra certification or an extra program that's actually going to help you out in the field, I want to tell you, I highly recommend you do it. Now, there's someone watching this video right now. Maybe you're pre-nursing, pre-PA. I couldn't recommend the EMT field more for your hours. You're going to be in charge of patient care. Many moments where you're going to be in charge of patient care right so it's great if you're a pre-pa or pre-nurse or pre-doctor even um, to become an emt to get that experience in in that environment to get a taste of what medicine is like because you're going to see the hospitals you're going to see the uh, the ambulance you're going to be able to give patient meds you're going to be getting vital signs you're going to be with paramedics who are acls and pals providers so that is what you're going to get a taste of if you're pre-nursing pre-pa pre-medical uh, school. So if it's your goal to get in a fire department, I would highly recommend you getting some sort of EMS cert, EMT, advanced EMT, paramedic. It's gonna make you shine out in front of your competitors getting on the fire department of your dreams that you wanna get onto. And again, what this goes back to is this. The healthcare profession, the healthcare field, there's so many different angles that you can take inside of medicine and healthcare. So I can't recommend enough getting in to the profession because paramedicine, EM, EMS in general, is expanding, it is growing as a field. At every single level, every single level, EMT, advanced EMT, paramedic, volunteer ambulance corps, paid, everything is in the growth of expansion and EMTs and medics are getting to do more and more and more. So I can't recommend it more to you if you're someone that wants to get in the EMS, like I have, or if you're someone who's pre-nursing, pre-PA, or pre-MD, that is my recommendation to you. Uh, a day on the ambulance would actually look like. So what that looks like is pretty simple. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna come on to base, you have your uniform on, your scope, right? So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna check in and check your equipment. So if you're a new EMT, you're gonna check your AED, your, you, have, you have your medications like aspirin, epi, remember oxygen's a medication, guys. So you're gonna check your oxygen tanks, okay? You have a, a quite large tank in the ambulance and then a smaller portable tank and you usually have backups of those things as well. So you wanna check on that. Then you have a lot of, you have splinting equipment, you have banjing equipment, you have, you know, uh, um, call them neck or spine collars uh, to check, check those out. You have patient movement equipment. Well, what is that? Stretchers. There's other types of stretchers that is not the actual stretcher, like a scoop stretcher for moving patients. 
So there's a lot of equipment to check out on the ambulance itself, right? Uh, what about splinting equipment, right? So what about other oxygen airway equipment? So suctioning equipment. So this is all the stuff that you check when you first get on and you're gonna become an expert of managing every single one of the pieces of equipment I just talked about at the EMT level and you'll have more tools at AMT and more tools as a paramedic and more tools as a flight medic or critical care paramedic on the ground. I wanna welcome you in to EMS. And if you're studying for EMT, AMT, or paramedic school, I have something for you in the link down in the description. You're gonna see either on the left or my right here, you're gonna see kind of an example of kind of what the program looks like. And it is a prep course, but also it's gonna help you pass school in easy mode and also pass your boards. So we're talking about a prep course, we're talking about passing school while you're in school and getting you prepared for your boards wrapped up in one package with lifetime access. The link for my program is down below in the description. Everyone, thanks for watching, liking, subscribing, and I will see you next time.